Welcome back, Gear Geeks, to the Gear Geek channel here on YouTube, coming at you with an overview, review, and some thoughts on the Military Sleep System, also known as the MSS. This is the four-piece version that uh, you see most commonly on the market today. They uh, have started adopting a five-piece system that you can uh, quickly identify with uh, a lot of gray colors and the digital ACU pattern on the bivy. And uh, this one is uh, comprised of three sleeping bags and one stuff sack. That's the four pieces. The five piece is the same basic uh, sleeping bag setup with uh, two stuff sacks, one smaller one for just one bag or the, uh, the larger one for the whole system. So uh, that's how uh, you can identify the different systems out there. Uh, this is the, uh, the cheapest one that you can find on the market since they've stopped using them in the actual military or at least slowed down on using them. And so they have started flooding the market at a very, very reasonable, very attractive pricing. Um, I'll tell you right now, I got my entire system, which I would say is uh, used, uh, slightly uh, worn and in good condition, uh, which a lot of people call that a, a level two. Um, and uh, I got mine for only 80 bucks. So uh, you can find these really affordably out there if you're looking for maybe a bug out bag or just a, a more affordable bag that you can bring into the you know, cold weather or something like that. Uh, I was recently camping in the Sierras in California by Lake Tahoe, and uh, I have a down sleeping bag that's treated me very well for about 15 years, uh, but I was noticing it was starting to get a little chilly even with layers on underneath, and so I started looking for alternatives, and uh, this is what I decided to go with uh, for the money. Uh, it's hard to beat a, a bag that goes down to what they claim is negative, um, negative 10 uh, for the, uh, the, the sleep system, and that's including having layers on and stuff like that. Uh, that's the military rating. So you want to do a little bit of research on some of the websites. In fact, uh, I'll go ahead and post a, uh, uh, or put in the comments down below, uh, a link to a really great overview that I found. So if you're looking for more details than this video covers, go ahead and check that link in the description box below. And while you're at it, click that subscribe button because I've got a lot more good stuff coming down your way. But let's go ahead and take a peek at some of the close-ups of how this system works, how it goes together, and uh, see if this might be something you're uh, going to want for your system. A little bit closer shot here for you of the four pieces. Off to the right, the big black spot there is obviously the stuff sack. And then you can see the other layers kind of peeled away, and I've unsnapped some of them so you can kind of see how they separate. Uh, up in uh, the, the top there, you can see uh, my Thermarest uh, camping pillow. So that's the little bit of gray you see up at the top there. It's obviously not part of the sleep system, but just wanted to give some color contrast for you. And uh, this, uh, this system basically... Uh, attaches together using snaps and then independently zips up uh, all three bags and uh, so let me go ahead and give you some close-ups of what that looks like. So first of all uh, just to highlight the bivy actually does cover your face it's a breathable material made of Gore-Tex so uh, hopefully no condensation builds up depending on which environment you're in maybe you will get some uh, maybe you won't I haven't had an issue yet but I also haven't brought this bag down to the extremes uh, it's almost winter here in California, and uh, it does usually uh, start getting cold uh, in about February, um, January, February time. It starts really dropping down, so uh, I do plan on using this system uh, during the colder months, but uh, for now, uh, I've recently purchased this bag and haven't brought it to its extremes. Uh, this bag is not necessarily my opinions on how cold or warm this thing is, uh, as much as just showing you how the system works together uh, obviously, I spent my own money on this bag, so uh, based on the research that I did, this bag did fit my needs uh, for the kind of weather that I was going to be encountering. And it's nice that you can have a system that doesn't require, uh, you know, a sleeping uh, uh, tent. Uh, so you're actually able to use this as a standalone system. Uh, so basically, this guy just folds back, uh, velcros uh, together uh, with the uh, with the top here or the bottom, top, I'm not sure how you call that anyway, that part there, they, they button together. Uh, they also have these uh, snap and uh, zipper uh, closures that you can see uh, kind of how those work. Uh, what you do is you actually uh, snap the patrol bag, which is what this green color bag is. You snap that uh, along the zipper line here together so they become kind of one bag uh, and now they're attached. And then the patrol bag actually snaps, as you can see right here, to the, uh, to the bag, the uh, extreme cold weather bag. Uh, so that snap uh, system actually connects together and you got these little kind of like Legos uh, snapped together and it becomes this little stack of buttons. 
and then uh, the uh, the bivy actually snaps to itself. Uh, you've got a snap over here uh, on the outside of the bivy that allows you to uh, snap the whole thing shut after you've zipped it. So that way it adds a little extra water uh, tightness. All the uh, you know all the um, uh, water kind of pours off, uh, and uh, you're in kind of a little bathtub type situation because it's uh, kind of stays up off the ground, so no water. Uh, you know, should come into your uh, sleeping system, which is kind of nice. Uh, once you've, uh, you know, attached everything together, obviously I didn't uh, connect that one, uh, then each of the bags uh, independently zips open uh, and uh, they've got, you know, decent little baffles uh, on the inside. And uh, of course, they also have, uh, uh, you know, baffles, um, you know, for around the neck. And then uh, they also have a nice uh, cinch system. Uh, that comes around here so each of the hoods can be cinched up uh, with this uh, shot cord. Uh, each of them have their own independent uh, system. Uh, so you can use any of these bags independently or of course you can use them all together as a full system which is what they're uh, designed to be uh, to used as as you can see uh, it together right there. So uh, let's go ahead and take the bags apart and talk a little bit about each one of them. So the outer bag that you see here is what's known as the bivy. It's meant to be kind of the shelter uh, for the system. It uh, doesn't have any added uh, real temperature savings. It just keeps wind, rain, uh, etc., off of you while you're uh, in the system. So this doesn't, uh, from my understanding, add any uh, you know, increase in uh, how, how low a temperature you can go. Uh, although wind chill can be a major factor and keeping, uh, keeping wind from penetrating your, uh, your sleep system uh, certainly will, uh, will increase how low of temperatures you're able to go as far as wind chill is concerned. And then of course uh, wetness is a big factor uh, when you're out in the elements. And so this bivy uh, protects against all those things. Let's look at the next layer. Now the next layer of the sleep system is what's called the patrol bag. Obviously you can see this one is more of a greenish color. I think like I said the newer versions, uh, I believe this bag is uh, like a dark gray and then the inner bag is a light gray. Uh, but uh, as far as this system, this is really only meant as a standalone anyway, uh, just talking about it uh, independently. Uh, the patrol bag is rated for uh, between 30 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, obviously that's uh, more of a summer bag, uh, maybe some people might call it three season bag. And um, you know, I've been using it in temperatures down to about uh, high 50s is all. Uh, so I haven't even brought it down that cold. And it's super comfortable. Uh, I do uh, unzip uh, a little bit at the bottom for a little bit of ventilation when it's uh, a little bit warmer. Uh, sometimes I'll even unzip it all the way, just put my feet in the box and then just use the rest of it as a blanket. In fact, I, I like to have it over me and then I'll put the hood on top of my head and then that way it's nice and dark and uh, so if there's light coming through or whatever, it's nice to have that system in place. Uh, but that's the uh, patrol bag. Like I said, it's rated for between 30 and 50 degrees. Um, I've been using it right around the, the high 50s, low 60s and it's been warm. Uh, very, very comfortable. The material that they use is super soft. It's like a blanket. Not like normal sleeping bag material. Uh, it is a ripstop uh, nylon, and uh, uh, you know I had a couple of repairs on this, uh, very small ones. Uh, one was seemed like a cigarette burn or something like that uh, when I got it, and um, it, it took to mending very, very well. And uh, just a really high quality material, very light. I think these are like 2.5 pounds, something like that, which to me was uh, light compared to some of the bags uh, I've got. Again, it's meant as a light, lightweight. Uh, you know, low or uh, higher temperature bag. So uh, let's take a look at the next layer, which is the, uh, the, the, the colder weather bag. All right, and here you've got the cold weather bag. Obviously, this is the black uh, bag in this system. And uh, what's nice is that each of these bags can be used independently or you can mix and match. So you can actually uh, put the bivy over the extreme cold weather bag or you can put the bivy uh, over the uh, you know over the the lighter weight patrol bag, um, or you can snap them all together and use them all together. You can use them without the the bivy with the. It's just it's a very very well done system. Um, I've never experienced anything personally like this before uh, in a system like this. So uh, I really like the flexibility. You know if you want to start lighter in the evening, if it drops down to a colder temperature, you just uh, hop into the colder bag and. Uh, you saw in the last shot, obviously, that the patrol bag goes over the cold weather bag. I would have expected it to be the other way around, 
but my thinking is is that uh, the colder uh, weather bag you want to be tighter uh, on your body uh, to minimize how much air there is um, you know to warm up and so the uh, you, you want the the coldest bag that's meant to be used as a standalone or together uh, is obviously going to be the one that's the tightest around your body. That's the one you're looking at. And then the patrol bags for warmer weather, it's okay if there's a little bit more air moving around in the bag. So uh, it's a little bit bigger. So when you can, you know, when you use them together, you just slip the patrol bag over the cold weather bag and uh, you've got a nice, uh, nice warm extra layer. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, another air layer in there, um, you know, more, more of the uh, insulation. And then, of course, if you want to throw on the, uh, the bivy on top of that, uh, you're going to be super toasty to some pretty low temperatures. Uh, I don't personally uh, think in California where I go, uh, it ever gets low enough to where this bag is ever going to be, uh, you know, uh, not sufficient. So uh, that's something that uh, I took into consideration. Uh, so let's go into philosophy real quickly about these different bags as I give you some final shots of everything together. So there everything is, all uh, stuffed into the stuff sack there, and um, let's kind of wrap things up with some pros and cons. Uh, one of the pros is that this does uh, stuff down pretty uh, small. Uh, the system itself, uh, I, I'm not sure the exact weight on it, but uh, it's not super duper light. Uh, but uh, considering you don't need to also add a tent to this system, uh, if you want it to be out in, uh, in just your bivy, uh, boy, that's uh, that's a pretty light system if you factor that in, that you don't need an additional uh, shelter, that it, it contains its own shelter. Uh, that's also nice that you can separate this system out into its different components if you wanted to you know, get different stuff sacks for this or uh, you know, stuff this in the, into different compartments on a, you know, like a backpacking uh, backpack uh, so that you can kind of disperse the, the, uh, the, the bulk out across different platforms. Uh, you can do that. Uh, so that would, I would say, probably be a pro. Uh, it's also nice that you can purchase this system in a lot of cases on different websites, one piece at a time. So if you're looking at maybe building up to the complete system, you want to get the higher quality, uh, kind of unused or, um, or lightly used and in brand new condition, what they call level one on the Midway USA website. Um, if you're looking for the highest quality, but you don't want to shell out the you know, 150 to 250 dollars that it is, depending on which website you go on for that complete system, brand new. You know, just buy the patrol bag first if you're in summer in the summer season, or you know, if you're looking at uh, at doing some colder weather camping, get the uh, get the cold weather bag first, and maybe the bivy. And you know, if you already have a stuff sack, leave that out for now, and then if you want it down the road, you can add that to it. Add the patrol bag. It's kind of nice. Also, for that matter, if one of the components does get damaged. Uh, you're actually able to, uh, you know, get uh, uh, different parts, you know. So if your patrol bag gets too close to the fire and, and just completely melts uh, and there's no way to repair that, uh, you can go get a brand new patrol bag for maybe 30 bucks or something like that, 30, 40 bucks, whatever it is, um, and be able to, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, mend your system uh, through the purchase of new equipment, which is, uh, I think, kind of unique. You're not going to find that in a lot of other systems that are out there. Um, what else are some thoughts? Uh, obviously, the material is synthetic, uh, which does have some pros and cons. If you've uh, done your research, you know uh, down obviously is going to be lighter and warmer for the for the weight. Uh, but you're also going to find that it has some issues uh, potentially with water. So if it ever gets wet, you might uh, find it molding or clumping and losing its effectiveness. Uh, versus synthetic, uh, you know, is going to be a little bit warmer. Uh, but it's also not going to have some of those issues, um, or excuse me, it's not going to be as warm, rather. Uh, but it's, uh, it will be warmer when it's wet, actually. So that is one, one area it will be warmer in, is if it does get wet, you will still be able to stay uh, somewhat warm. Uh, it's also something that uh, is washable. And uh, I like, uh, you know, my down sleeping bag, if I ever uh, get holes in it, which I've actually had two over the last 15 years I've owned it, um, if it gets a hole in it, uh, at one time I didn't know it had a hole and I start stuffing it in the stuff sack and lo and behold, uh, it was kind of like that scene in uh, home alone where the, the fan turns on and blows the feathers around the room. And, and, uh, you know, it's like the tar and feathering, uh, for the bad guy. Um, <laughs> that's kind of what happened in my tent was I had a big old feather shower and, uh, I did my best to collect, uh, as many of the feathers as was worth it and shove them back in the hole and seal it back up. But, you know, that's something to consider. If this is a bag that's meant for, like, emergency use or, you know, you're going to be, uh, you know, on the go or something like that, 
Uh, you know, if you do get a hole in this, uh, you know, you just need to mend it up and none of the batting on the inside or the insulation is going to come out. Um, so uh, the other thing is I can't attest to this material being good for uh, mends and repairs. Uh, I had a couple of different uh, spots on here that needed to be sewn up and I used super glue to, uh, to make sure that the material would, uh, uh, would stay nice and tight and just kind of keep the fabric together so none of the uh, material would rip. Uh, I've experienced uh, that happening before, so I've found a workaround using a little bit of super glue uh, to keep those uh, those fibers nice and tight together and nice and secure, uh, especially on the bivy where it's meant to be a waterproof uh, situation. Uh, you know, when you put a little super glue on the threads that you use to sew it up, it prevents, uh, at least kind of minimizes how much water is going to soak up into those threads and uh, and transfer in inside. So I put a little super glue on the inside and on the outside should be pretty good to go at least for a while. So uh, so those are just some of my kind of random thoughts on this bag. Uh, again, look in the description box down below to find a, a link to a review that's very, very thorough. Um, this was just kind of meant to give you some of my thoughts and feelings on using this, uh, uh, you know, on why I decided to purchase this and kind of some of the functionality of it, give you some up close and personal things that uh, I don't see in other uh, videos. Hopefully this did the trick for you. Hopefully you go out there and purchase this. Uh, sleep system for yourself and um, you know if you like this kind of information uh, go over to the Gear Geek channel just go ahead and click over right now to uh, to my channel and check out some of the other videos on there I've got stuff on firearms I've got things on like uh, the tactical wall shelf uh, I did a review recently on the Maxpedition Janus uh, pack um, and uh, some EDC philosophies that are on there that uh, uh, I think I share some information on there I've not seen anywhere else on YouTube, not just a pocket dump, but uh, just some ways of coming up with your EDC system that uh, uh, that makes sure that you don't have too much, but you have everything that you need. So uh, go check that out. Click the subscribe button. Be part of the Gear Geek community by adding some comments down below. Go ahead and throw a thumbs up or thumbs down to, uh, from, you know, based on what you like or don't like on uh, any of my videos. Uh, and that way I can uh, custom tune the videos that I put out for you guys uh, based on what you want. So that's really what this channel is all about. It's all about the subscribers and the viewers and uh, what it is that you guys are looking for, trying to provide extra value for my fellow man. So hope this video did just that. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good one, you guys. Bye-bye.